I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I'm a coronavirus researcher, and I've been working on these viruses for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> there are a couple that have been working on it longer, but uh, yeah, I'm up there. <laughs> Hooray, being old. Um, all right, let's do an update. Uh, so this is where the world is right now in terms of COVID-19. Now you've heard about the outbreaks in Hong Kong. Um, and that is bad. That's lousy news. And uh, it looks as though the Omicron variants that are over there are uh, having a very bad effect on people. And like, like I was saying before, there's really nothing fundamentally different about Omicron or how it works compared to the other variants. And the data sets that show that it might be milder all have flaws that you could drive a truck through, <laughs> basically. Um, there there are uh, things in the data that mean that you can't believe that particular part uh, of the conclusion, and it certainly looks like that's the case. Um, but uh, let's go zoom out and go worldwide. So what's going on? All right. Uh, these graphs are from uh, Next Strain. Actually, they're from the uh, Covariance site, which is run by the same people. And of course it is. They do fantastic visuals. Um, you can see here, over time, these are the different variants coming up. Boop, 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 boop. And uh, the big green wedge, for example, uh, that's the Delta variant, the main version of that. The purple wedge over here, that's going to be your original recipe, uh, Omicron. And the sort of lavender looking color, this sort of anemic purple, that is BA2 like viruses. So, what you see over time is that these viruses have been replaced by one another. And while in the US or in uh, Europe uh, or even South America, it's still only a little bit of BA2. Um, what you see in South Africa and India is basically a picture of the future. BA2 has taken over and it's coming for you, <laughs> wherever you are, if it's not already there. And the other thing you can see is that Delta is virtually gone everywhere, and also that Omicron is being absolutely crushed. So BA2 is a fitter virus than Omicron. It is better able to survive whatever the characteristics are. And there again, um, we like to come up with explanations for why one virus might be better at a particular thing than another. Sometimes we can back them up. A lot of times that is very difficult to do. So the easiest thing to say is just that Omicron appears to be, uh, rather Omicron was fitter than everything that came before uh, in this particular climate with rising immunity. Uh, and BA2 is fitter than Omicron. Yeah, BA2 is to Omicron as Omicron was to whatever came before. <laughs> and you can fill in the uh, is to with uh, absolutely dominates. Yeah, because it does. All right. So that's what's going on with the variants. Um, but there isn't a real new variant out there that we need to be watching at the moment. There are little bits of things, but pretty much it's an Omicron world and it's vastly uh, or rather gradually shifting to a BA2 world and BA2 is basically Omicron. It is very similar, very similar spike and so um, there have been a couple studies that showed that immunity to one will actually give you pretty good protection against the other. So it's nice, right? Yeah, everything's not not the worst. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's not my usual uh, uh, brand, but here you go. <laughs> So Omicron, you could reasonably say, is everything uh, downstream of this particular little branch. You could call the whole thing 21M, or you could call the older Omicrons like 21K and the BA2s like 21L. That's how they're grouping them here. There's other names for these things. And ultimately, the names are just how we keep track of stuff. They don't matter to the virus. Um, what you can see is that Omicron actually represents a pretty good spread of different viruses. So any little dots that are not directly on top of each other, in, in other words, any vir dots that you can see, have some genetic differences. And so I uh, set this up, and again, this is over on uh, Next Strain, because um, they're very good at uh, making this stuff. Uh, but these are ranked by mutations. So this would be like 52 mutations, 53, 4, 5, 6, whatever. 
and so on. And so you can see that the Omicron cloud has a lot of different stuff in it. And as everything else goes extinct, I think eventually we're going to start branching and dividing, you know, within the Omicron clade, just because I think it'll be the only thing that's there that actually makes sense. And we've already started to do this. Uh, there's actually fairly sophisticated little uh, ways to break this down. The one that seems to be going really well is uh, this one. That's our BA2, which is actually the most mutated on average uh, compared to the original. But here it is at about, let's say, 65 mutations. And here is delta. Let's say delta averages around 40 mutations. 105 mutations out of 30,000-ish bases in the entire virus is still, if my math has not completely failed me, something like 99.6% identical. So the most different variants of SARS-CoV-2 that exist or have ever existed are still really, really close to the base for comparison. If you were to look at polio virus, so we can actually vaccinate reasonably well uh, against polio virus. And there are three main strains that have been circulating in the wild, polio virus one, two, and three. You compare these two, they're about 80% identical to each other. And no two of them are particularly closer than the others. If you look at the whole genome nucleotide level, which is the same thing we're talking about here. So with polio, we can hit three viruses that are only 80% eh, identical with a vaccine and do a pretty decent job. With coronavirus, we're having trouble hitting a whole bunch of viruses that are all within 99.5% or more identical to each other. And that just shows that coronavirus is a difficult beast. This is <laughs> why we had trouble with coronavirus vaccines before. Um, it's just a tough problem, but it's a problem we seem to be getting a little closer to solving. So things are going reasonably well in many parts of the world. And uh, yeah, if you're in one of those parts where it's not going great, <sighs> It's probably not forever, but uh, by all means, yeah, if you have the ability uh, and uh, the vaccines are available, uh, getting additional doses of any of the vaccines seems to be a good idea, uh, as long as you can do it safely. So there you go. That's roughly where we are today. And uh, yeah, it's not the worst. Yeah, it's the only time you'll hear me say that. It's not the worst. All right. Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.